Coming up on Jersey Sports Zone, the Rumps and Fairhaven defense has a new weapon. And the Homedale Hornets defense shows plenty of sting on homecoming against Red Bank Regional. Plus, the Marlboro Mustangs turn to their workhorse in overtime to get their first win of the year. This is Alex Lorenzo in Englishtown. The Ashante Worthy Show comes to Manalapan, but it's the undefeated Braves answering with a highlight reel of their own, an impressive 55-point performance on Thursday night. All the highlights coming up on Jersey Sports Zone. This is Nary Rodriguez and Edison, where the Old Bridge Knights improved to 2-2 two two, thanks to their defense in this Middlesex County matchup. I'm Courtney DuPont reporting from Phillipsburg High School where the Phillipsburg State Liners just had an outstanding running game performance against the Hillsboro Raiders. Mean Joe Green puts up 268 rushing yards as the State Liners remain undefeated. Highlights coming up on Jersey Sports Zone. I'm Rich Crampanis. Thanks so much for logging on to JerseySportsZone.com for a special Thursday night edition of our high school football coverage. Thanks to Yom Kippur, we've got three straight shows for you Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and our goal is to bring you over 30 games of action as part of our week four coverage. We don't like to talk too much. We're going to jump right into the highlights. We'll get started right here in Rumson as week four is underway. Jersey Sports Zone's coverage of Middletown South is being brought to you by Prowns Windows and Doors. Jersey Sports Zone's coverage of Rumson Fairhaven is being brought to you by Servpro of Eatontown Long Branch. The dog pound out in full force as Middletown South pays a visit to Rumson Fairhaven. First quarter, Rumson punting. That's Jake Krellen with an unbelievable block and fumble recovery. Middletown South has it first and 10 at the nine yard line. But this Rumson Fairhaven defense made a major statement. It's a three and out for Mid South. The Eagles miss a field goal, and it remains scoreless. And the Rumson Fairhaven offense, thanks to their stellar offensive line, set the tone. Pete Lucas, 15 yards. He's in the zone. It's seven nothing. Rumson Fairhaven in front. Big play here as Elijah McAllister, six foot seven causes the change in trajectory, and it's Mike Lazat taking care of the rest. 20-yard pick six, 14-0 Rumson Fairhaven. McAllister missed his junior season with a torn ACL. He was primarily an offensive player, but now we're seeing Elijah McAllister, the D1 prospect on defense, wreaking havoc. He has been dynamic in his last two games playing defense. And as for Rumson, they've got the weaponry. This is Alex Maljan taking the swing pass from Dan Harvey. See you later. 88 yards for the score. They're not going to get him. At the half, Rumson Fairhaven has a 21-0 lead. On the first play from scrimmage in the third quarter, Pete Lucas does something special. Look at that cut right there. He's able to escape the tackles, and then he shows that extra gear. Pete Lucas goes 63 yards for the touchdown. He's one of the state's top rushers, and he showed it there. 28-0 Bulldogs. And we can't say enough about this RFH offensive line. That's Maljan with a 21-yard run, and it will set the stage for the final score of the ball game. Dan Harvey to Ian O'Connor, 15-yard touchdown. And Rumson Fairhaven is now 3-0 on the season. That's an impressive win for RFH, 35 to nothing over Middletown South. Pete Lucas touched it just 10 times, 130 yards and two touchdowns. The Rumson Fairhaven defense with Christian Lanzalotto at linebacker and a host of others, Keegan Woods, Chase Frang, they've got a great unit. And now they add Elijah McAllister, who we saw two years ago primarily as a receiving threat. Now as a defensive end, he gives a whole new dynamic to an already stellar defense. McAllister coming into form. We caught up with Elijah after a 35-0 win. 
Yeah, it's a new look for everybody. Um, I love defense, honestly. Um, it's great. I feel more natural there. Um, it's, it's more of a family atmosphere. Um, I feel more natural there and just everything. It feels good. I'm, I'm excited to be out there. The great thing about this team is all I have to do is do my job. A lot of kids around the country, a lot of recruits, they want to make every play for me. It doesn't matter. All I got to do is do my job. When we come out with a win, I'm happy. That's it. Jersey Sports Zone's coverage of Freehold Borough in Manalapan is being brought to you by HIT Training. The undefeated Manalapan Braves hosting Ashanti Worthy and Freehold Borough. The Braves getting the daunting task of slowing down one of the most electrifying players in New Jersey. But you know, this Manalapan team has a dynamic playmaker of their own. This is Naeem Mayfield, and he is as good as they come. Look at him go. My goodness, a 72-yard run all the way down to the six-yard line. And Mayfield is able to finish things off. He cashes in here from a yard out. It's 7-0 Manalapan early. Later in the first quarter, we see Worthy once again adding to his mile-long highlight reel. Look at this magic here. Wow, escape move right there. Look at the hesitation, the juke moves. Are you kidding me? Look at this run by Ashanti Worthy. Out of bounds at the 19-yard line. And then Ashante shows off his passing skills. Good ball here over the middle in traffic. That's a great grab by Matt Krause. It's a 7-6 game. Manalapan answers right back. Luke Corsion with the pump fake. He fires to Symir Blacknall. Blacknall down to the 47-yard line. And on the same drive, early second quarter, Chris Maximic finishes it off from a yard out. We got a 14-6 ball game. Manalapan up eight. The Manalapan defense was doing everything they could to slow down Ashanti Worthy. Maximic drags him down here for the quarterback sack. And that sets the stage for Manalapan to get some separation. Naeem Mayfield is at it again. Committed to Fordham. The Rams are getting themselves one heck of a football player. Look at that move right there. Mayfield. 94 yards from the score. How about this? Mayfield with 199 yards with 4.16 to go in the second. 21-6 Braves in front. So now Worthy goes back to work. He's able to scramble and extend the play. He fires downfield. Javante Hare's got it. Looks like he's in the zone, but he's marked out of bounds at the six-yard line. Javante Hare with a great catch. And now Worthy keeps it himself. Ashanti Worthy from two yards. We got a 21-13 game with a minute 43 to go in the second. This Manalapan offense is as high-powered as they come. Corsione to Eli Avivi. Avivi goes out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. And I'll tell you what, this Luke Corsione's a gunslinger here. He rolls right, fires left. Dale Siskowski. Look at Siskowski. Avoid tackles. That is awesome. Having a little stiff arm right there. Siskowski, 29 yards for the touchdown. It's 28-13 with under a minute to go. But that gives Worthy time to do some more magic. Scrambling. Ashanti is able to buy some time. And here's the long pass. Matt Krause gathers down the sideline for a huge game. And Worthy is able to get great blocking here from the O-line. Matt De Silva back of the end zone. Great grab. Oh, my. A two-point conversion makes it a 28-21 game with 23 seconds to go in the second. And Ashanti Worthy running, passing. How about some defense now? Here, he's able to make this pass break up in the back of the end zone. And Worthy is all fired up. At the half, Manalapan with a 28-21 lead, but Freehold Burrow is in the game. Second half was a different story. Opening drive for Manalapin. Corsione rolls right. Alex Claro flips into the zone. Great somersault right there. Claro with the TD from 19 yards makes it 35-21. Worthy now trying to run the option. It's a fumble. Dale Siskowski, great two-way play by Siskowski on Thursday night. 
And this Braves team really showed off its depth. So many weapons. Symir Blacknall, look at that great catch. 40 yards, he's down at the Freehold Burrow two-yard line. The offensive line was really able to get major push in the second half. Mayfield, great vision there to find the zone from a yard out. 42-21, the Braves now up by three scores. We move to the fourth quarter. Another turnover created by the Manalapa defense. Tony Pierce snatches this one out of the air. Pierce to the 48-yard line. So another great play by the Manalapan D. And Naeem Mayfield, he is just doing this night in and night out. That was a fantastic run right there. 28 hard-earned yards. Mayfield gets his fourth touchdown of the night from two yards out. That made it 49-21. And the Braves would add one more score late in the fourth. And Ed Guerrero's got to be awfully proud of this Manalapan football team. They are 4-0 on the season with a 55-21 win over Freehold Burrow. There is so much talk, especially around the Jersey Shore, about Ashanti Worthy and every single adjective and every single accolade is well earned. Ashanti Worthy is unbelievable. You saw it once again in the highlights. But we are learning that Naeem Mayfield is the real deal. Four touchdown runs. He's got 15 on the season. That's 15 touchdowns in four games. He goes for over 250 yards. This Manalapa team has emerged as one of the very best in New Jersey. It's going to be a fun journey to watch this team as they work their way towards getting back to the state finals and getting another championship in Manalapa. 55 to 21, the Braves with a big win over Freehold Borough. Jersey Sports Zone's coverage of Hillsborough is being brought to you by Princeton Orthopedic Associates. The Hillsborough Raiders played the Phillipsburg State Liners at Maloney Stadium in an early week Thursday night showdown. Hillsborough came in having only one loss, while Phillipsburg remained undefeated. However, the State Liners were well aware that Hillsborough is a team with talented wide receivers who provide threats down the field. The first half of this game would be quiet, but 7.40 to go in the second quarter, and Joe Green gets a handoff from Jack Staggart for a one yard touchdown making it 7 to nothing, State Liners, and we would take that score into the half. Coming out of the half, here comes Hillsborough, guns a-blazing. Matt Moore throws a 35-yard touchdown pass to Justin Brown. Hillsborough ties it up 7-7 to -7 as they start to get their momentum going and their passing game on track. But if one person can stop that Hillsborough momentum, it's number 30, Joe Green. He runs four yards for his second touchdown, making it 14-7. to Peberg as the tide begins to change in favor of the State Liners in the fourth quarter. 9.30 left in the game and Jack Staggart hands the ball off once again to Joe Green who says he's not done. He's going all the way for his third touchdown. He goes 78 yards to make it 21-7 State Liners. Coach Duffy said that this is Peberg's guy and he is having one heck of a night tonight. Three touchdowns and 268 yards for Joe Green. One punt and one snap later, and this happens. Matt Moore looking for Justin Brown. There's an interception. It's tipped by Nick Jocelyn and caught by Justice Branch, who completely loses his mind with excitement. The Liners would get the ball in the 28. However, they would fail to score. No need for concern, though. 5.30 left in the game. Hillsborough has the ball in their own 33, and Moore throws his second interception of the night. Mark Zugota picks it off, and he would take this one all the way to the house. He goes 42 yards for a pick six and his first varsity touchdown. His teammates very excited for him, and rightfully so. It is 28-7 liners. One minute left in the game, and Peberg would finish this one off with a one-yard touchdown by Jeff Vitale to make it 35-7 state liners. And there you have it. After a slow first half, the State Liners win this one with an explosive fourth quarter. Crunching down some numbers, we see that Phillipsburg had twice as many first downs as Hillsboro with their 18 to an opposing nine. Joe Green had three touchdowns, 41 carries, and a total of 268 rushing yards. After the game, I talked to Justice Branch, Mark Zagoda, and Joe Green concerning those two interceptions and Joe Green's 268 yards. I'm feeling good right now. I'm feeling pretty good right now. I praise the line. I praise the defense, especially for the stand that they put up over here. Uh, I'm feeling good after this win, really, really good. I thought I was gonna go through my whole high school career without a touchdown. I was, I was really disappointed playing defense only, but man, getting that in, it's, it's the best feeling I could ever imagine. We brought in a sophomore for our defense, and, and I love that kid, he's, he's a hard worker. So if we're, uh, it's a tight game, and 
we're, we're starting to pick up the momentum and and then right when our defensive uh, Nick Johnson got it I knew and, and it just hit me in the hand so I would have caught it any other way so I, I just had to bring it home because I the D line worked too hard we, we all worked too hard for us not to really put the points on the whole game our coaches were telling me not to um, not to play too soft and to stop overthinking things so I just before that play I was thinking about how I need to help my team out and uh, produce and then when the ball was in the air I don't know, it was just killer instinct that I saw, you know, I had to get the ball out of the air. Uh, the game plan is how it always is, you know, stop the run, control the pass, and we did, we came on and did everything we needed to do, and I'm just glad that we got the win. Phillipsburg runs away with this one and remains undefeated thus far in the season. Reporting from Phillipsburg High School, I'm Courtney DuPont, and you're watching Jersey Sports Zone. Jersey Sports Zone's coverage of Colts Neck and Marlboro is being brought to you by Hit Training. Thursday night football at the Marlboro Rec Center. The Mustangs hosting Colts Neck. Both teams seeking their first win. Late second quarter, Kyle Moore on the QB keeper. Nice job of maneuvering there. Moore is in the zone. At the half, it's Colts Neck with a 14-7 lead. Third quarter now. This is Johnny Health. He Always makes great highlights on the zone, and he's at it again. A 61-yard run for Johnny Health. He's out of bounds at the 13-yard line. It would lead to this more to Alex Schutzer. Go and get it. Great grab right there. Schutzer with a big TD. We're tied at 14. Colts Neck was driving, looking to take the lead in regulation. Under two minutes to go at the 28th. Dontrell Alston the hit. Paul D'Amato falls on the loose football. We're going to overtime. Tied at 14 apiece. Big play there by the Marlboro defense. In OT, Colts Neck comes up empty, and then Johnny Health is going to will his way to victory. Look at this run by Johnny Health all the way down to the two-yard line. You know what's coming next. Johnny Health for the win. Bingo. And the Marlboro Mustangs are victorious. Everyone's fired up. And Johnny Health, last year he had a overtime game-winning TD run against East Brunswick. Great scene on Thursday night as Johnny Health and Marlboro gets a 20-14 win in overtime over Colts Neck. Coach Jason Degato's got to be proud of his kids playing without their star wide receiver, Justin Marcus, who's injured. We hope he gets back in the lineup soon. It's Marlboro getting it done with an OT game winner. And after the game, our Ryan Olson caught up with the hero, the Mustangs running back, Johnny Health. Ryan Olson here reporting with Jersey Sports Zone. I'm here with Johnny Health. Two monster runs, man. I'll keep it short and sweet. Tell me about those last two runs to score in overtime. Uh, it was, it was really a family effort. Like, the past couple days of practice, we were really getting on each other because we're almost all walking off the team. And we, we had my, my Marine crew to come, and we, we came together as a family. We really bonded, we hung out. We, we just really came together, and I did it for the man next to me. I didn't do it for the man for myself. And I know all the linemen did it for me. I did it for all the linemen, I did it for the fans. It was a family effort. I, I, I bumped my ankle at the beginning of the game, and it was, it was a mind over matter thing. I, I knew Marlboro hasn't beat a uh, ain't no team in five years. And it was about time this team came together and got away. Jersey Sports Zone's coverage of Tom's River North is being brought to you by Pete, coaching for success. Let's go to Howell. A lot of people excited about the Rebels. This is a fun team to watch. Howell hosting Tom's River North. Coach Luke Sinkhorn's team looking to go to 4-0 on the season. And Eddie Morales is one dynamic passer. Look at him. By time, finds his favorite target, Nassim Brantley. That's a third down conversion. 21 yards keeps the drive alive, and it sets the stage for Nick Chambers. Chambers working his way left, and Chambers is able to navigate his way into the end zone. Great run by Nick Chambers. It covers 59 yards. Howell takes a 7-0 lead. Give credit to Tom's River North. Looking for their first win. They answer right back. Gennaro Garcione. And Gennaro is moving. 51 yards for the score. It's the equalizer. We got a 7-7 ball game. But once Eddie Morales and this offense gets into a rhythm, they are very, very hard to slow down. Morales, nice intermediate range pass there to Nick Chambers. That's good for a 24-yard gain. And it would lead to this, Eddie Morales. Fires, Nassim Brantley, D1 prospect, shows it there. 
Nassim Brantley with a 28-yard touchdown. We got a 14-7 game. And what makes Howell so dangerous is that they really have a good balance of rushing and passing attack. Chambers up the middle. Look at Chambers go. Nice extension into the zone right there. 39-yard touchdown for Nick Chambers. Makes it a 21-7 game. And Eddie Morales better thank his offensive line after this one. He's got time to sit down and have a cup of coffee. Look at the time he has. And Morales is able to finally fire one downfield. And Nassim Brantley gathers. Great catch by Nassim Brantley. 38 yards. It was a 27-7 game at the half. And Howell goes on to a 30-7 win over Toms River North. Nick Chambers, 13 carries for 180 yards and two touchdowns. Morales with two TD passes, both to Nassim Brantley. Coach Luke Sinkhorn has this Rebels team firing on all cylinders. 30-7 is your final. The Rebels are 4-0 in 2017. Jersey Sports Zone's coverage of Red Bank Regional is being brought to you by Risers Landscape Supply. Jersey Sports Zone's coverage of Homedale is being brought to you by BCB Bayshore, your community bank. It's homecoming in Homedale where Red Bank Regional comes to town. Great to see the Pop Warner youngsters out there. And this is a good divisional matchup. We get started in the first RBR in striking distance, but it's Dan Tampone with the quarterback sack. RBR misses a field goal. It stays scoreless. Second quarter. Tampone gets back in the backfield for another quarterback sack. And Tampone getting it done on D for the Hornets. A short punt puts Holmdale in striking distance at the 16. Jeff DeSico finishes off the drive from a yard out. 7-0, Holmdale in front, 3.20 to go in the half. Big play of the game comes here. Late first half, under a minute to go. We got a fake punt and Mac Burns fooled the ball. Weaving through traffic. It's burned for 49 yards. Homedale takes a 14-0 lead at the half. That play really sparked Homedale. And in the second half, Red Bank Regional trying to get something going. Kid who's really made some big plays. This Karan Malloy can go, number 10. Great job by Malloy there for the tackle for a loss. RBR would get the ball back on the next drive, but the Hornets were swarming. Johnny O'Byrne gets the hit on Steven Nowitzki, and Scott DuPont scoops it. DuPont looking for the promised land. He's got daylight, but Scott DuPont is brought down just short of the two-yard line. Nonetheless, a fantastic scoop and run by Scott DuPont, and it sets the stage for Cameron LaMountain, a mountain of a man. He's all psyched. The Hornets take a 21-0 lead. The rest of the story in this one was Homedale's stellar play on defense. Johnny Christian with a tackle for a loss here. Great play there by Johnny Christian. And the Homedale Hornets, that student section, should be proud of their team. The Jeff Reynas era gets its first shutout, and the game ball is going to the defensive coordinator, John Principe. 21 0 is your final. The defense and special teams really came to play for Homedale, and the offense capitalized when they needed to. Homedale has won three games so far this season, one more than they did all of last year. So there is some real improvement happening in Homedale. And after the game, our Jay Cook spoke with the Hornets about their first shutout and the importance of a big senior night. Well, it's something, you know, we didn't even want to talk about it there at the end, right? So, you know, the kids, the kids, have, the kids have wanted one for a long time, right? We came close with Spotswood. We, only, we held them to seven. Um, and as it got closer and closer, the kids kind of really, you know, they really fed off the energy of the crowd. Uh, they were feeding off the energy on the sidelines. It was a great night for the seniors, I tell you. Oh, yeah, we knew this was a big one, big of the season. Like, Coach knew that this game wasn't optional. We had to win this game, and we did everything it took. We were so prepared for it. We just went out there and got it done. Jersey Sports Zone's coverage of Edison is brought to you by Immediate Care Medical Walk-In of Edison. Thanks, Rich. It was all defense in this one. Both offenses struggling to get something going, but Oldbridge was able to keep their composure, and thanks to Coach Lonza Fama's game plan, they were able to secure the victory in this one. Oldbridge visiting Edison. Both teams fired up for this Thursday night clash. 
We said defense was big in this one, and Eagles defensive end Keegan Maguire gets the party going with this big time hit. Few plays later, Knights air it out, and Orion Marquise Lee Gillum is there for the takeaway. Four names, one catch, no problem for 13. Edison takes over in their own territory. Quarterback Frank Vega keeps in. Oldbridge on the second effort rips it out. Liam Knowles recovers and they get the ball back. Knights will have to settle for a field goal as Calagero Caruso puts it between the uprights to make it 3-0 with 5-0-4 remaining in the first. Next Edison possession. Vega drops back and finds his man for the big gain. Eagles in the red zone trying to get the TD on fourth down and Liam Knowles says no not this time to end the half. Star of the third, Edison gets the ball and Old Bridges' Manny Weger kicks off the second half with this big time interception. Knights trying to capitalize, Anthony and Bimbo flips it to Julian Rivera who takes it downfield to put his team in the red zone. Two plays later and Bimbo keeps it and takes a leap of faith to put his team up 10-0 after the extra point with 6.36 remaining in the third. Hold up though. On the ensuing kickoff, Orion Marquise Lee Gillum hits the burners. He takes this one downfield. OMLG knocked out at about the 20. Edison finds himself on fourth down once again, and the Knights buckle down to force another goal line turnover. Then, with time winding down in the quarter, Tyler Hawney bursts onto the scene like a new soft drink, and the big man takes it down to Edison's 11 for the big gain. That would set up this pass from Mbimbo to Manny Weger for the TD to start the fourth quarter. Don't worry, we got you covered, Manny. Eagles trying to give it all they got, but Old Bridge will hold it down on defense. 17-0 is your final. Old Bridge brings a big old W back to 5-16 with them. Great defensive matchup. Not a lot of penalties in this one. Both teams not backing down one bit. Afterwards, we caught up with the Knights and their head coach on how they got the job done. Game plan was to execute blocking, execute tackling, and we had to get better on special teams, and we did all three. Uh, I thought we had to play fast, play confident, because this is a good opponent, but if we play fast and confident, mental, we knew our assignments mentally. That's how we came out with the win. Tonight, I think the defense played great. Uh, defense made tackles, they made plays, uh, got a lot of takeaways, and uh, that was able to you know, allow our offense to be on the field and, and make some conversions. But defense was a story for us tonight. Following their bye week, Oldbridge will take on Piscataway, for Jersey Sports Zone, I'm Nair Rodriguez. Let's wrap things up in Westfield where Wachung Hills was trying to stun the state. Westfield with a 28 game win streak. Former Giants offensive lineman Rich Seibert in Wachung Hills visiting the Blue Devils. Opening drive of the game for Wachung Hills, Joe Sanjiacomo makes a statement. That's a big lick right there. Puts an end to the drive. So now it's time for the Blue Devils offense to go to work. Hank Shapiro to Stephen Barden. Uh, bye. Look at the wheels by Stephen Barden. That's a great run after the catch. 54 yards. Westfield takes a 7-0 lead late in the first quarter. Second quarter action now. Third and 10 for Wachung Hills. The snap goes over the head of Connor James. Jordan Barham with the recovery. Good field position for Westfield. They are able to capitalize. Tim Aliegro on the very next play. 10 yard touchdown run. That makes it 14 nothing Blue Devils in front. The Westfield defense did a great job of putting pressure on the quarterback all day. Jake Velobera coming off the edge. Brings down James with a sack on third and 11. I give credit to Watch on Hills. These kids are playing hard. Jonathan Taub with a monster hit right there. Oh, good stuff right there. Good hard-hitting football. And the Warriors are going to get on the board. This is Connor James to Zave Thorne. And Thorne is gone. 81 yards for Zave Thorne. We got a 14-7 ball game. But late in the half, Westfield driving third down. They need nine. They get 11. Shapiro to Adam McDaniel. Move the chains. And then fourth and 15. This is a pretty play right here. Hank Shapiro will pump fake. 
and it's McDaniel with the catch in stride. That's gorgeous. 28 yards makes it a 21 to seven halftime lead for Westfield and the Blue Devils go on to a 35-7 win over Wachung Hills. A huge game for Adam McDaniel. Four catches, 90 yards, three touchdown catches. Shapiro did a good job. He threw for 188 yards and four touchdown passes. And Westfield High has a 29-game win streak. They were impressive on Thursday afternoon with a 35-7 win over Wachung Hills. We are so excited to showcase our product all around the state. Thanks so much to all the programs who have welcomed us with open arms. We're all about great highlights and features and going beyond the score. Coming up on Friday, we'll crank it right back up. 13 games scheduled, and Saturday, we'll have 10 more games of action right here on JerseySportsZone.com. And don't forget on Sunday, head back to JerseySportsZone.com, vote for top play and game balls, as we are very excited to honor high school football players and their great performances all year long, all around the state. For our team at Jersey Sports Zone, I'm Rich Crampanis. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on Friday with more high school football action right here on JerseySportsZone.com. Want to see highlights and features from your favorite school? Jersey Sports Zone is entirely supported by our great sponsors. Email marketing at jerseysportszone.com to get your business in front of our loyal audience and highlights from your hometown.